Hello, um, my name is Jamie uh, Larosmo. I'm a computer programmer and a high school teacher. And today we're going to try and build um, a simple little application, a simple little app for your phone that generates a story. Now, I'm just going to go through the, the technical side of things. I'm not going to worry about the details of actually making the story, but show you how to put all the parts together and then you add the content so the story gets generated. So, here I'm just going to start a new project. And you can see I've already tested it out once to get it going. So I'll just click on that one and hopefully we will start up. So here I have a couple of parts to the design environment. The first is a palette of things that I can use. So there's a long list there. I'm only going to use two things, a button and a label. And then there's what they appear like on the screen. So if I drag a button in, I can start adding them to the screen. And you can see they're already filled with details. And now for this program, I'm going to be using three buttons and three labels, one after the other. And you can see on the screen, screen number one, they're already in there. If you go through the help system for App Inventor, you'll find lots of details about how to do this for yourself. Now, I'm going to go to button one, and I want to change the text to button one. So this could be the location of my story. The text for the label number one I'm going to use to tell people what the location is but I'm just going to put a little minus sign to leave it almost blank so I can see where it is and I know it's blank and it's just going to sit there the second button button number two could be for the situation and, the, and then the same with button number two or label number two I'm just going to put a little minus symbol sign in there so it appears almost blank and finally, the event. I'm not too sure exactly what you are looking for in terms of your three things that you're looking for, but this, you can change the names of the buttons so that it makes more sense to what you're doing. So, and I've just put in a minus symbol for the third piece of first text label. And this is basically the design side of it. I have the buttons I want, I have them in the location I want in the designer. There's a lot more you can do here, but we're just getting started with some of the basics. If I switch over to the block side of things, on the left-hand side here, I have various built-in controls and all the buttons that I've added to the designer section. So for this one, I'm going to worry about the button and what happens when you click on it. So that's referred to as an event. And then I'm going to add in two global variables. The first one will be location, which will just be a number. In this case, I'm going to set that number to zero, just as a starting point. The other one is locations, plural, uh, because this is going to be a list. And I'm going to make it into a list of parts. And then I'm going to put some text in that list. So here I could have my first location is home. Go and add a second location, say school, and then I want to add a third location. Oops, drag that from over there and put it there, and that made that mask. But you realize there's only two little jigsaw hooks to plug them in. And the way to extend this, if you actually click on this little cog icon, grab the thing from in here and slide it to the bottom of that list, and I can now add in the next one, and I can add in more if I wanted to. So I can grab another chunk of text, put that in there, and a fifth one as well. So name, and I have no idea for this one, so birth. We'll go since it's in birth with a bit of a space theme here at the moment. So this gives me a number where I can store which item on this list I want to work with and then the list itself. Now when I go and click this button the first thing I want to happen is I want to set this number to a random number that will pick an item off that list. So I need to go to my variable and set it to something and I should choose that variable and we'll make it location and we want to set that to a random number. The random number, 
which is doing this on the list. Now in this case, you can see the list is from 1 to 100. I don't want to be 100 because that's just like too long. What I do want to be is however long this list is. So if I decide to have a list that's five items, like I have here, that's fine, it chooses that. If I decide to make my list 20 items, it can adapt to that and work. So the trick here is I go to my list, set a built-in box, and I go length of list. And it needs another little bolt on here, which is the name of that list, which is a variable. Okay, in this case, a get. So I set the name to location, which is my list. And that should pick something out of my list. And then we need to actually, we have this list number. Now we need to actually get whatever item of that list and put it so that people can see it. And this is where the label comes in. So here, label one. And I want the text for that label, which is this bit here. Set label one dot text to something. And I'll just plug that in the bottom there. And what I need to pick it from is something from my list. So we need a set select item from the list, which is, and I need to tell it which list and which item. Here's where the variables come in. I need to get the list. In this case, the list is my locations. And the second variable is that random number I created, which is location, the singular. And this should work for the first button. The other two buttons haven't been set up yet. So if I look at this, school, earth, there we are. And as long as I keep clicking that button, I'll keep getting different things. Now, working on the other buttons, it's the same process. All we need to do is give it different variable names to look at. So if I scroll down here a bit, I can get button two when it's clicked, and I can create two variables for it. Now, this is all to do with the situation stuff. So, situation. situations. So I'm just going to keep it all lowercase because that way it's easier to type. So the situation, if, like before, is my random number. I set that to zero to start with, just so it's set up. The situation is the plural, is a list. It's a list of items. So in this case, I'm going to add three. I haven't decided what they are yet. And I'm going to make this thing long enough to handle three places and that's done so what do we do well situations walking playing swimming just three random examples now I need to get set that location for the random number so here I'm dealing with the situation that one there and I want to make that the random number. So I tap on the random number, throw away the 100, grab the length of my list, list length, plug that in there, and then assign it whatever the length of that list is. So I give it the list name, situation. So here, yeah, it's between the first item on the list and however long the list is. Then going back, I set label number two, whatever the text is, set it, click, uh, and then draw off the list. So select an item on the list, and then give it the list name, and the, oops, the list index, that's what it's referred to. So the situation with the plural is the list, and the singular situation is what item in that list you're dealing with. So in this case, we've only got three items. And that should now work. So we go back to here and hopefully it works. There you are. The third one, it's built identical, except it all has to do with button three and list three. And in this case, that's how hard it is to put together your Android application. I hope this has been useful.
And if you experience any problems with this, look through how I've set this up. So I've set up a variable that is starting at zero and it's the situation or the singular of whatever I'm looking at. I've then taken another variable and made it into a list of things. And then finally, when the button is clicked, so this dot click thing here, it sets this first variable that you did, the situation, to a random number from one to how long that list is. Now you can change it to one of the maths things here and set the length of that list, but if you change the length of the list, you then have to update that. And that can lead to some problems, but it's easier to do it this way or put it up here. And then finally, once you've clicked the button and you've done your random number, you need to make sure that that piece of text gets put in the right spot. So here for label two, got the dot text, so that's what it's been set about that label, and you can change all sorts of stuff about labels, but that's not really the focus of this. And then you grab an item from that list that you've made, and it puts that text in there. Some other funky things that you can do if you want to make your project look a lot better is that for, say, this location butter, you can have its old oh, background color. Well, we don't want default. We want to change it to, say, red. So the button becomes red. And then we can make the font bold so it stands out a little bit or italic and so it's sloping. And there's a whole bunch of other features down here. So you can set the site height to automatic. If you want to change the font size and make it really big, say 22, you can make it bigger. The problem here is that most phones have a very limited size, so you've got to be very careful about what you're changing here. And you know, if you want to, you can add an image if you've got images to add. If you don't, then you work with what you've got. And it's, yeah. But the, the core of the program that you want to do is that you click a button and some text pops up. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, please like and share them and I'll try and answer them. Thank you.